Dynamic Duo, Felix Reyes Jr. and Timothy White Jr. On today's rundown, we'll be discussing NCAA March Madness. Who is most likely to make it to the Final Four and whom is most likely to win the national championship? Also, can any team stop NCAA Women's Basketball UConn? Also, draft talk for Ben Simmons and Buddy Hill. And our top five for the week. So before we get this play started, let's head over to Eric for this week's Street Corner. Welcome back to a brand new edition of Street Corner. I'm your host, Eric White, and it's my favorite time of the year, guys. It's around March Madness, and on this edition of Street Corner, we're going to be asking the students of Cookman who do they think are going to win the NCAA tournament. So who do you think is going to win the NCAA tournament? Syracuse, because New York is the best place to shop. Man, I don't even watch basketball like that, but I'm expecting Oregon, upset Duke, you know, bring it home for the West. That's about it. We out. I mean, there's a lot of subpar teams around here. That, well, we got the rainy chap dupes, like, at a number four seed fix Oregon today, so we don't know. But I think Maryland can pull it out if they beat Kansas, you know, because they the number one over, overall seed in the whole tournament. So if they do that, they got the best chance. Well, I might be kind of biased, but I like the way we was playing in the beginning of the season. My man's Melo going to turn it up for Maryland. He going to show out. I'm going with the Maryland Terrapins to win the NCAA tournament. Yes, sir. You heard it again. The Maryland Terrapins. Yes, you heard it first. <laughs> Back to you guys in the studio. March Madness is here, and I think the madness might have begun a little too early in this year's <laughs> tournament, starting with the mayhem in the first round. Now, I know we thought we all picked the right teams to win in each round, right? Well, heading into the Sweet 16, I think there has been uh, quite some changes there. Felix, let's start with you on how you think about the tournament. Well, I mean, March Madness is undefeated. We already know that. It's always going to be an upset, whether it be a, a, a five taken out, of, I mean, a 12 taken out of five or an 11 taken out of six. But my original Final Four was Kansas, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and Michigan State. And after, I think it was the first night, West Virginia got knocked out, and then Michigan State got knocked out, and my, my bracket was destroyed ever since. But I'll take some new teams to replace those two teams that I lost, if it's okay with you guys. And I will take Iowa State to make the Final Four now, and Indiana to make the Final Four. Really? Yeah. Because all, all number one seeds never make the Final Four. It's only happened probably two or three times. So I don't, I don't expect it to happen this year with all the parody that's been going on in, in the uh, NCAA this year. But my winner, and I think Tim might agree with me, I think he might like this pick. I'm going with Oklahoma. That man Buddy Hill is something serious. I think he leaves on top, and he also wins the Wooden, Wooden Award for Player of the Year. I mean, watching this guy play when he scored 29 points against VCU in that second half was just amazing. And I just can't see him losing to Kansas three times in one season. It's very difficult to beat a, t beat a team two times in one season, let alone beat them three times. I just can't see Kansas doing that to these guys. <laughs> Tim? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to say good morning to Dominique Williams <laughs> and Phyllis Reyes Jr. on this lovely, uh, beautiful day. But getting into the topic, man, Final Four? Look, I didn't even do a bracket. You know why? Because I <laughs> predicted that this was going to be a horrible year for March Madness. And was I wrong? I think not. And even when they gave second chances, ESPN's brackets were so discombobulated that they had to give people a second chance. They gave everybody a second chance on the bracket. Dominique calls me one night. Hey, are you going to do your bracket? I'm doing my bracket right now. Are you going to redo it? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even going. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm. I'm not even going to worry about it. And when it comes to a Final Four, I'm not even going to worry about that. You know what? Leading into the next topic, honestly, my bracket is the final two that are going to make it, and I think it's going to be Oklahoma. And I do agree with you. Yes, Buddy Hield has been balling lately. It's going to be Oklahoma, and I'm throwing a wild card in there from the East. Let's say Gonzaga. Why not? They've been playing pretty well, but the East is pretty up for grabs right now. I can't lie. I can't lie about that. But definitely Oklahoma versus Gonzaga national championship. You heard it here first. <laughs> what do you, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Felix. Oh, I need yeah, to hear yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, y'all oh, want to hear what my right. picks were? Yeah, definitely. He's going to win. Okay, well. Obviously, my oh, final four picks were Kentucky, Kansas, Duke known and Michigan State. Hey, I always got faith in the Big Blue. Okay, I never doubt the my Big Blue. blue. This year was right. they were, Middle Tennessee. 
I'm taking UConn. What's about it? UConn's always been a great. They've won over 70 like games in a row. Come on now. I mean, if anybody's gonna challenge them, it might be South Carolina, maybe Notre Dame, but UConn has yet to lose in the tournament. I mean, they've yet to win in the tournament by less than 40 points. That is ridiculous. Like, nobody, they need they need to replace some of these teams that are in the tournament on the men's side. <laughs> They are, the only way you can stop them is if you could punch a hole in their tire, keep them from getting to the stadium or something like that, make them forfeit. But if they get to the stadium and they show up, chances are they're going to show out. And even if you try and food poison them, they still might end up be winning by 10. Because they're beating them by a margin of 40. So if you food poison them, it might slow them down 30 points, but they're still going to get the W. Come on now. So yeah, I, UConn all day. I don't, I don't see anybody beating them this year. Like I said, they might keep it close. South Carolina, Notre Dame might keep it close, but as far as beating them, I can't see. All I gotta say is, once upon a time, Baylor had the best chance, and guess who was on that team at that point in time? At that point in time, uh, Brittany Griner, definitely. Oh, don't forget <laughs> when um, Skylar Diggins was there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't yeah, forget, can't forget about them. But they got they got ran too, man. <laughs> <laughs> they got ran. Numbers don't lie. Right. <laughs> All right, after the break, we'll have some more college basketball. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Not again. Well, with March Madness already here, before we know it, the month of June will be here. You know what that means, the NBA draft. So there have been some draft talk about Ben Simmons and Buddy Hill being the number one pick. Tim, let's start with you, because I think you were really more interested into this. What do you think is going to be the number one pick to go for? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to say it's not Ben Simmons, and I'm going to say it's Buddy Hield. Before I break down why, I'm, before I break down why I think it should be Buddy Hield, I'm going to break down why I think it shouldn't be Ben Simmons. Basically, yeah, everybody, you know, he has all the hype, yada, yada, yada. 19 points, 11.8 rebounds, 4.8 assists per game. I get it, I get it. He's a... He's decent. He's not. He's more than decent. Honestly, he's above average for his age and being the fact that he was 
a freshman coming in doing it. So I see why all the hype went straight towards Ben Simmons, but let's take recognition to the grind that Buddy Hill put out throughout these four years being at Oklahoma, going coming into his rising stardom as of this season, and still carrying his team through the NCAA tournament, whereas Ben Simmons couldn't even get his team in the tournament. Let's, uh, you know, take recognition to that. And another thing, might I add, Buddy Hill, man, scoring machine. This guy can do it all, and he's a, this is his fourth year. He's a senior, so he's going to come into the league more mature than Ben Simmons is. Whether as Ben Simmons, we don't know if he has a consistent jump shot. One day he might hit a few mid-range. He might knock down a three-pointer or two. To be honest with you, I want to see him and Anthony Davis go at it in a three-point contest. I don't know who would win. I got my money on Anthony Davis I'd personally. Pick Davis too. So that's what I'm saying. And, and Davis is a center, and Ben Simmons is a forward. And everybody's trying to make the comparison to, oh, he's the next LeBron James because he has, he has uh, awareness, offensive awareness. He's a good passer. He has decent handle. But, look, all I'm saying is Ben Simmons reminds me more of a four than a three, but he plays the three. And when he gets into the league, he should be looking to play the three. He should be looking to get better on his handling, get better on his IQ, get better on his, um, his shooting consistency. But for the most part, Everything that I just named that Ben Simmons needs to get better at, Buddy Hield is already pretty good at it to make it to the next level and could possibly blossom once he gets there his rookie year. Honestly, I'm going to make an early campaign for Buddy Hield Rookie of the Year. Oh. Well, a year early? A year, year and a half early? early. Yeah. Oh, wow. and, and another thing, I'm going to close out with this. Brooklyn, if you're smart, you'll get Buddy Hield. That's if you really bad. love your fans, That's including me, the Brooklyn Nets will find a way. I don't care if we get the first round draft pick. I don't care if we get the third. I don't care if we get the fifth. I'm talking about the pick. I don't care if we get the first pick, first round of the first pick, third, fifth. Figure I don't out figure out a way to get Buddy Hill. <laughs> figure it out, get it done, do it. Have that Mark Cuban mentality. That's what I need from our GM. I need that. We need, we need Buddy Hill. All right, Felix, I'm done. I'm going to give it to you. We need it. Well, first, I, I will, I'm going to preface this by saying it really depends on what a team needs. So for the Lakers, we wouldn't need Buddy Hill. We already have enough guards on our team. But a team like Philly or New York, you definitely would need a guard. The Lakers need everybody. We need everybody. Hey, 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 the, hey. The Knicks need, need everything. Y'all losing Kobe. We pretty much we need, have a big pass. We don't need hey, y'all this don't year. But I think most likely it'll be Ben Simmons. He's younger and he's a more raw talent. Now, as the years have gone by, we've seen teams move away from picking the juniors and the seniors of the upper class coming out into the draft, mainly because they just feel like they're too old and that they want more time with a younger player that they can develop themselves. And I really do think that it's unfair because uh, the players that are juniors and seniors, such as Buddy Heald, are definitely more seasoned. They're definitely more mature, more, more developed and ready not even just from a mental uh, standpoint, but from, from a physical standpoint. He's a solid 6'5", to something that can shoot, dribble, pass. Lights out. Right. Lights out. But I do think it's unfair that you said Ben Simmons didn't make the NCAA tournament because he decided to go to LSU, he which is not a powerhouse. If he would have came small. to Kentucky, we would have been, exactly. been in this. Exactly. We would have been in this. Exactly. Thank you. Right. But remember, you. Buddy Hill is on a team with other juniors and seniors on his team, so they've all grown together to make to be able to make this tournament run. But at the end of the day, you go to a team and where freshmen dominate, and one and done. Also, thank you, Don. Also, he's going he's going somewhere where he could shine. Name another, name, an, name another player from LSU what difference does besides Ben Simmons. Uh, it's, a guy, it's a, someone on there with the last name Williams. Someone <laughs> on that team has the last name Williams when, and Brown. When you would, you go, would go to Kentucky, <laughs> you're, you're bunched in with all the other freshmen that have, been there, that have been there and you came out. stand out the way Anthony Davis did in 2012. Definitely. Oh, my goodness, Dom, take the floor, please. <laughs> you are, look, all I have to say, no, but I'm just saying it's not his fault. fault that he didn't make the tournament when – He's putting up the numbers that he's putting up, he's putting up and the, numbers, his teammates is not putting up. Not you can't put that all well. on him. Everybody up. always says that the NCAA game is more of a team game, right? It's the most team well, game. Everybody loves to watch it no, because it's more competitive. Too, but but if, your teammates day, are, if your teammates are, are producing at the rate that you're producing at, you're not going to win many yeah, games. he should have took right. his behind, right. his behind but, another team. Here, here's another thing. Here's, a, here's another thing I have to say to comment on, well, really to critique what Dominique just said. You know how you said, oh, you should have you went to Kentucky 
you would have been able to stand out at Kentucky, right? Yes. Ben Simmons, how do we know if Ben Simmons was really challenged? He went to LSU. That's not a powerhouse. If he would have went to Kentucky, he probably would have been more challenged, which would have allowed him to grow at probably even a more rapid pace and probably would have really tested who the player Ben Simmons really is, where his true potential lies and where his true skill is as a whole. You feel me? As, or as a at the same time. At the same time, he still did play against Kentucky twice this season. So, and he put up the same numbers. So, I mean, yeah, he probably wasn't challenged in practice, but during the games, he always showed up and showed out. But I'm saying, when you're challenged in practice, when, when you're challenged in practice, when you're challenged every day, that's what really lets you know, that really, that really helps you grow at, it, at, an, uh, at a substantial rate. When you're not challenged every day in practice, you know, then, you know, you can't really grow like how you really, how, how people really expect you to. People, what they see on game day, that's because the whole team relied on Ben Simmons. The ball was in, was in, was in Ben Simmons' hands, excuse me, majority of the time. So, of course, he had no choice but to show out. He was going to take those shots. He, he knew he was going to get his shots up, put it that way. He was going to take at least 20, 30, maybe even 40 shots a game if needs. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Well, kind of like LeBron with teams. Cleveland, you know, they put all the pressure onto him, saying he's the leader, and that's kind of like what Ben Simmons is kind exactly. of being stuck with. And, and if you notice, LeBron being the, the great player he was, he didn't really grow into a leader until he went to Miami. Why? Yeah. Because he was yeah, pushed by Dwayne sure. Wade and Chris Bosh every day in practice. He was pushed by other players that were just as talented as him on the same level. Exactly, right. exactly. And, and that's my point with Ben Simmons. That, that too. That too. And that's my point with Ben Simmons. I don't think he was really challenged enough on the daily, if anything, to really see where his true his true um, skill is now. He's still pretty much kind of a wild card to me, in a sense. That's what I'm saying. Like I said, he doesn't have a consistent jump shot, so we don't know. We don't know if this guy's going to end up like a Michael K. Gilchrist or if he's going to turn into uh, Anthony Davis and end up playing maybe the four or the five. Oh, he's still a starting forward for the Charlotte Hornets. No, that's like, dang, I just remember him. Yeah, he's still, a, he's still a starting forward for the Charlotte Hornets, but it's the, the Charlotte Hornets. So that's what, that's what I'm saying. Everybody puts all this big LeBron James hype on Ben Simmons, and I'm just saying, not even wait till the, till the combine. Let's just see what this guy can do when he actually gets in the league. And if somebody is willing to take that risk to take a forward, that either whether they need it or not, if they're willing to take that risk to take a forward and get Ben Simmons and see that raw talent grow, they better harness it. Because if they don't, I feel like it might flop. That's all I'm saying. Next, y'all need to do whatever y'all need to do to get Ben Simmons. Forget Brooklyn. Always, always doing shit. Would you like to add anything else? Nah, I mean, I mean, we pretty much said it all, but I still do think that Ben Simmons, just off the simple fact that he's younger, and it's sad to say, the simple fact that he's younger, he's probably going to get taken. That is true, because they always, a young freshman or sophomore always I get can, first I, or I second. I can't lie about that. I can't lie. You're exactly correct about that. All right. Moving on. Hey, Tim, do we got a top five this week? We definitely do. Let's go ahead and get right to it. Yeah.